Hello everyone and welcome to my cozy winter reading nook. This is something I recently created because I love reading in the winter so I have my big window here so I can see um, the snow coming down. I have all my library books right here. I have my big reading chair. I have plenty of space to put my hot chocolate or whatever else I want to make and I have my cozy blanket. So I'm very excited to do a lot of reading here. But the, the point of this video is not to talk about my cozy winter reading nook. Although if you don't have one, you should make one. Um, it is to review Earth of Fire by Orson Scott Card and Aaron Johnston. Now this is the second book in the first Formic War series, the second book in the first Formic War series. Um, and I reviewed the first one, which is Earth Unaware, um, a couple weeks ago. So, um, if you're not familiar with the first Formic War series, um, this kind of explains all the events that led up to Ender's Game. As in, like, what, what was the first contact like? That's basically, this is a first contact book. That's what I would consider it. Um, or the first contact series. So it's... Yeah, it's what what happened in the past that led to the events that take place in Ender's Game, which is probably the book that Orson Scott Card is best known for. Um, so yeah, I, the end of book one, Earth Unaware, Earth was still unaware, um, but this was not due to plenty of people trying. For example, we have um, Victor. Victor is the son of a family that does mining in at the asteroid belt. Um, they were some of the first people to encounter um, or as far as the readers were, some of the first people to encounter the Formics, which is what they're calling them, um, because of their ant-like appearance. So Formic must be um, something Latin for ant. So they're calling them Formics. They encounter this thing um, and they've sent Victor to Earth to try to warn the rest of humanity because this, this ship that's coming towards Earth with all the Formics in it is putting out a lot of emissions that is preventing radio transmission so they're not able to tell everyone back on earth um but they send victor in a little ship to try to warn everyone well no one believes him because there's rules and regulations and stuff that no one who just mines asteroids out in the belt are familiar with such as you need to legally enter a country and it turns out the moon you can't just show up to and then be welcomed in you're supposed to have paperwork and you're supposed to be processed correctly and you can't just show up on a ship that was supposed to have mining or and then just expect everyone to believe what you're saying about aliens coming from outer space. So things kind of go poorly for Victor. He winds up teaming up with, um, and this is all in the first book, this is a recap of the first book. He winds up teaming up with a young accountant, I think she was, named Imala, who was recently fired because she discovered some stuff on the books that she wasn't supposed to. Uh, some tax avoidance, some number, number, numbers massaging, things like that, things that she wasn't supposed to see which paints the company she works for, which is Jukes Limited, the big rich people in the book's company. She was a very low level person there, so she was let go. Um, she winds up teaming up with Victor because Imala believes Victor that this is real, but no one's listening to them. Um, basically, Earth is still unaware. Things are not looking good for their cause because the reader as a reader, we know what's going on. However, Earth doesn't know what's going on. And for me, it was very frustrating to know there's such danger coming and also having read other books, know kind of what's going to happen because of this. And no one's listening to Victor, which is very realistic. If someone just showed up and was like, oh, there's aliens coming, I probably wouldn't believe them either. This book has some key characters that are the same from the last book, mostly Victor Namala. We also see uh, a huge player in this book who played a minor role in the last book was Mazer Rackham. Mazer is a Maori member of the New Zealand army, uh, military. He appeared in the first book as someone who Wit O'Toole, who leads MOPS, which is like a military, like a paramilitary group that reports to NATO. Um, Wit O'Toole leads that group and he, Wit O'Toole had tested Mazer to join his group um, and Mazer wasn't selected to join the group but he's still doing his thing with the New Zealand military and he's pretty good at it. He leads some special forces I guess and he has been sent to China at this beginning of the book to at the beginning of this book to train the Chinese military on how to use some of their new technology that's going to be sold to them. The, the Chinese military. So Mazer's in China which becomes relevant. 
I wonder where on earth things are going to happen because the third person is a young boy named Bingwen. Bingwen is a young Chinese um, boy who spends a lot of time studying in the library because he is trying to pass an entrance exam which will get him out of rural China and have a shot at full education. Bingwen is a very very intelligent boy like not just smart and observant but he he's very 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 intelligent well beyond his years. So we have Bingwen who's in rural China. We have Meza Rackham who's in China. We have the aliens, which are speeding towards Earth, and no one who is behind the aliens, so all the ships that would have encountered him, all the mining ships, they can't reach Earth with their transmission, and a lot of them are being blown up. Um, and things aren't going well. Well. <laughs> well. Um, the name of this book is Earth of Fire, and this is... This goes about how I would probably expect some real first encounter to go. Um, maybe not. But I'm just gonna let this, um, the front of this book, which shows some lightning bolts coming out of a big red ball, touching this ship, which is splintering apart, and have you deduce how you think first contact went. How do you think first contact went? Right, with the peace treaty, the exchange of cultures. No. No, they, it, it kind of went to hell. Eventually, word gets out because Victor, Victor falls in the right, pe falls in with the right people who make kind of the right scientists who can independently confirm, who can talk to the right people. So it gets up the chain. It also, at that point, it's kind of like too late because this thing is basically there and anyone who can point a telescope in the right direction can probably see it. So basically no one listened to Victor and now things are gonna get kind of bad really fast. Um, and yeah I don't want to go too much beyond that point just because I want there's plenty of interest to or there's plenty of interesting things that happen and I want to leave that to you the reader to discover. I think what I've set up to this point is pretty fair. If you pull this book off the shelf at your library or bookstore and you see a big red thing zapping apart a ship, you're probably going to deduce that first contact did not go with an exchange of cultures and a peaceful greeting. Things kind of went, yeah, to hell real quick. So, first Formicor series. Second book, very, very good. I really like it. I think if people are going to complain about it, they're going to complain about two things. First of all, there's a lot of things that are convenient, or if not convenient, just a lot of coincidences to get people in the right spot. But I can also think about it this way. Um, you could say, well, this character met this character, and that's super convenient, but the author wouldn't have introduced us to Bingwen if he was just a random, or he wouldn't be a main, like, Bingwen, the small Chinese boy, wouldn't have been a very big player in the book. Maybe there would be, there would be one chapter on him, his experience, what was happening in China at that time, just to give, like, background or to flush out the world but he would be a reoccurring character if he has a if he's a reoccurring character I as the reader would assume he plays some role so they didn't meet because it was convenient we were introduced to them because they were going to meet because the authors thought it was convenient I don't know if that like train of logic makes sense I'm not worried about the plot conveniences there were more plot conveniences than just like characters meeting that were like mm, but I was getting the story I wanted so I looked past them and the second thing which I'm going to warn you make sure if you're enjoying this book to have the third book ready if you do not like cliffhangers this book ends on a huge cliffhanger and i think that would probably upset a lot of people i do not mind cliffhangers particularly if the series is finished and i can easily go to my public library and pull one off the shelf when i'm ready to read the next one but if you're someone who does not like cliffhangers Make sure you have book three right there, ready to go, just because if you finish this one and then you're gonna have to wait a long time to get the third one, you might be a little upset. Those are the two things that I think I could see people really disliking about this book, but overall, um, I liked this book. Um, I think it might've been slightly weaker than the first book in terms of like overarching story and atmosphere, but I think a lot more happened in this book and I think it's gonna set up a really good third book. 
I will say the first and second book I actually had read like five years ago, five or six years ago. Oh my gosh. Seven years ago? Oh, before I went to college. I'm so old. I read this a long time ago. Um, yeah. So I was kind of familiar with the beats of the story. Like as soon as something was happening, I'd be like, oh, this is familiar and this is going to happen. And then something else started happening and I was like, oh, this is familiar and this is going to happen. I never read book three of this series. I remember they got it in like my library in my hometown had ordered it and I was like going to college the next week. And, and um, basically I wasn't going to get a chance to read it. I do remember that. So I actually don't know what happens in book three. So it's going to be a surprise for me too. So that's why book one and book two, I know I had read them, enjoyed them, and I kind of was familiar with the story. So these reviews of them haven't been from a first time reader perspective, but book three is going to be completely new. So I'm interested in seeing um, where they go with this. I'm reading this book concurrently. Well, I'm reading the first form of book three concurrently with this series, um, The Expanse. This is book six currently reading it. Um, I'm on page 60 of book six. And at times I find a lot of similarities between these. I don't know if you'd consider The Expanse first contact. I'm at book six, no spoilers please. Um, but I, I think at, at by book six, like we've gone through quite a bit. There's alien something has been discovered in this series. I don't know if I would consider it first contact, depends what you consider life. This was first something. So it's kind of interesting to see comparisons. The one big comparison between this book and this entire series is, or like book four in the series maybe, is speed-based defense. So defense isn't based on, there's some level of defense based on speed. Who knows what that's going to um, play in. I found a lot of similarities between the first book and this series, less so between the second book and the series because this is kind of going in its own direction. But yeah, I just thought that was interesting. Speed-based defense plays a role in what's called the slow zone in this book. Um, and it plays a pivotal part of the aliens' defense systems in this book. So that was just an interesting little comparison that I noted and wanna, um, wanted to throw out. What did you guys think of this book, the second book in the series? Did you like it? Did you like it more or less than the first book? Um, yeah, let me know what you thought about it. I'd be interested to hear about it. Other than that, I'm going to go back to reading in my cozy re winter reading nook, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.